Hello, what are you doing in here? Right, I'm glad you're here actually because I'm going to be getting my ingredients out for my um, stuff today. We're actually doing something from the late 1800s, early 1900s. Some you'll have heard of, some you haven't. Uh, so let's see what we can do. I'll just get some of this and some of this and a few other things and I'll be right with you. Queen of Puddings is made with these ingredients. So we have breadcrumbs, butter, sugar, eggs, milk, and jam. Oh, and I forgot the lemon. We need the rind of a lemon. Here we go. So in my pan, I have half a pint of milk and half an ounce of butter. What I'm going to do is melt it on a slow flame and then bring it to boiling point and take it off the heat. So let's go on with that. Uh, so my milk and uh, butter have boiled. So I'm now going to add, I think I'll add the sugar first. There's one ounce of sugar here. So pop that in along with the breadcrumbs. Just get them all out of there. So that's two ounces of breadcrumbs going in. And we're going to grate into here the zest of a lemon which I've got here. So we'll just, excuse me, I'm right-handed, not left-handed. Be careful not to get the white part when you do this. So just keep turning your lemon. As you can see, I'm not getting any of the white. That's the bitter part. Just make sure you get it up. That's where your flavor is in the zest. And then give it a bit of a whirl to, in, to make sure you evenly distribute the lemon. Then what we're going to do, which is why I've kept the bowl here, is we're going to separate two eggs. So hard tap on the side, try and split the thing in half and you can see it comes out so just put the egg into the other one and then the other one and just keep going till you've got no egg white left or very little egg white left and if you do get any shell in use your shell to get rid of it so there's one egg white so that's two egg yolks gone in there and we're gonna just lightly beat them in so that look at the colour of those wow there we go seemingly this is a a pudding that came out of the old Monmouth pudding, which I, I've got to say I don't know a lot about. Um, I'll try and find more information about it. But seemingly Mrs. Beaton from years and years ago, um, who did her bread pudding, something similar to this, but she used to put her egg whites in it. We're not putting egg whites in them. She renamed it the Queen of Puddings because it seemed to go the extra mile. So once you've done that, Get your pie dish. Here we go. Oopsie. And pour it into your pie dish. Once you've done that, you need to bake in a moderate oven for 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes until it's set. Now, I wasn't sure what a moderate oven was, so I asked Alexa and she told me it was gas mark four. So here we go. So I have my stand mixer here and to my stand mixer I'm going to add the, the two egg whites to be exact. So pop that in there and what I'm going to do is whisk it until it is stiff. Okay so these look, oh yes, nice and stiff so we'll take that off. Okay, and now we need to add our caster sugar and fold it in. We're going to need a metallic spoon for this because a wooden spoon is too thick on the edge. If you look at the edge of that, that is rather thick where that is quite fine. So it'll cut through the egg whites a lot better and not destroy the bubbles we have in there. 
So we're going to put two tablespoons of sugar into our egg whites and we're going to fold it in carefully. So round and through, round and through. So this is our egg custard base and as you can see it's still got a slight jiggle to it. What I'm going to do now is add some raspberry jam to it. There's two tablespoons of strawberry jam and I put it in the microwave for about 10-15 seconds just to make it a little easier to spread. And if I give it a good swish around and what we need to do now is just gently dollop it around the pudding. And what we're going to do is hopefully spread it so it doesn't go into the pudding. So taking an offset, an offset uh, knife, just gently move it around, Ooh. being careful not to incorporate it into the pudding, I think is the idea. May need slightly more jam on this. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna leave that as is and I'm going to put my meringues on top now. I'm just going to put little dollops on top and then we're going to spread it out across the pie dish. Doom from before might be easier. Oops. Struggling with all kinds here at the minute. Here we go. And just gently move them around until they fit the pie dish. Now we need to put it back in the oven. We need to sprinkle it with sugar as well it says. So, mm, didn't see that bit at the end there. Of course this is to give it a crust as well. Now we're going to be making jam roly-poly. Now jam roly-poly dates back, would you believe, to 1845 is the first one ever recorded. That's a long way back. Anyway, I'm going to be following um, a 1910 version of the recipe. So it's from Mrs. Laurie's uh, Reliable Cookery. Well, hey. Anyway, so in my bowl, I've got two ounces of breadcrumbs. Um, you can see them just on the side there. Um, it said in the writing at the bottom of the recipe that if you added breadcrumbs, it would make the recipe lighter than just using flour. So that's what I've done here. I've also got six ounces of self-raising flour in there. I'm just gonna mix them in together. There we go. So they're all evenly distributed uh, throughout the mixture. And to that, I'm going to add four ounces of suet. Now this suet is vegetarian suet just because it was the only one they had in the co-op at the time I went in. So in we go with the suet and give that a good mix. Now surprisingly, this recipe does not have sugar in it. Yay! <laughs> so all we have to do now is add cold water until we get a dough. I'm going to add a little bit to start with, give it a mix and see how we get on I think. So what I'm going to do now is get my hands in just to see what it's like. You can tell with your hands whether it's too dry or too wetted so I'm going to see what it's like here it's tacky so if we just keep going we should get a nice dough now we're going to roll out our dough so I have some baking parchment just because I'm lazy and I don't want to clean my work top and a rolling pin to the side there 
and we're going to sprinkle my baking parchment with some self-raising flour and we're going to roll it out to about a third thickness and an oblong like an oblong we need as well okay so taking my dough which I have here I'm going to roll it out a little bit on my rolling pin so that it doesn't stick to my rolling pin and then give it a bit of a roll still a bit tacky in places so a little bit more on the rolling pin would be good so if I just turn that around and go that way on that's it and just keep going till it's about one third thick one third of an inch thick Sorry, which is about, I think, a centimetre. Now that we've rolled it out to about a third of an inch thickness in an oblong shape, what we're going to do is spread some jam over it. So I've put two to three tablespoons of raspberry jam in this bowl and I've heated it up in the microwave just so that it's, it's runnier, basically. Um, I need it to be able to spread easily. So now that our jam has cooled, what we're going to do is just dollop some of it over, so we'll put some over our pastry. Now then I will be spreading it. Now we don't want to cover the edges because we're going to put some water around the edges to help it stick. So we're just going to pop it in nicely like so. Cool, that's better. So there you go, as you can see, I've used about two and a half tablespoons. What I need to do now, take some water and dab the edges. Now this is the edge that is going to be the last edge. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of water on there so to help it stick. And a bit down the bottom here, only so that it will stick to whatever it goes next to. Okay, once we've done that, it's time to roll. As I put it on the baking parchment, it'll make it easier to roll as well. So turn it over, so. Give it a bit of a squish, and then gently do it again. And keep doing that. Slowly, there you go. Slowly does it until you get to the end. And when you get to the end, give it a little push down. Now what I'm going to do now is wrap it in non-stick tin foil. They used to put it into a cloth. It's like a muslin cloth, or they used to use old shirt sleeves as well. It was known as the, the shirt sleeve pudding. Um, it did lead to a nickname though called Dead Man's Armour Legs. So taking your tin foil um, it says to boil it in, as I said before, in um, a sleeve but we haven't got one obviously so we're going to steam it. So what I'm going to do is on my tin foil I'm going to put a little bit of flour down so that it doesn't stick. We're only trying to stop it sticking. Then we're going to be very careful and lift our jam roly poly. Ooh, careful! And pop it uh, in the centre of our tin foil. So, uh, that bit there, give it a bit of a Flip over. Now we want to leave a bit of room in here for the jam roly poly to expand on each bit. So I've left it tented here. I've folded it over here as well. It'll be easier for it to expand. Just, so if I just do it like so. And then pop it into your steaming pan. Ooh. Ooh, it's come open. <laughs> That wasn't very good, was it, Mrs. Odom? There we go. Now I'm going to place it over a pan of boiling water. I'm just putting a full kettle of boiling water in there. And I'm gonna boil some more water. But in the meantime, I'm going to put this, the jam roly poly on top. 
with a lid. Oops. And I'm going to start steaming this for one hour and then we'll have a look at it. So this has been in the steamer for an, uh, an hour and it said to check after an hour to see how it was. So let's have a look. I think it could do with a little bit longer personally because the edges don't look still look raw so I'm going to wrap it up again and put it back in for about another 10 minutes or so I think so I'm just taking this out after an extra 10 minutes to see what it looks like and it looks okay I think it's been in an hour and 10 we'll let it cool down for a bit and see how it goes I think is all our shortbread. It was a recipe done by the Pua around about the 1600s but became popular later on when they started to add flour into it in sort of the late 1800s, early 1900s. So I brought out my soup maker because I need to use the blades to grind some oats into flour. I've got eight ounces of oats here which I'm going to add to the mixer. And we're going to make flour out of them. So we'll pop the lid on, switch it on, somehow or other. I've forgotten how to use it now. There we go. And then get the blades going. We'll just pop that back a bit. Take that off. Yeah, looks all right. Looks like flour, I think you can see that. Okay, for the rest of my recipe, what I need is four ounces of butter. Now, they probably just used any fat that was lying around when they first started making this, but butter tastes nice. They would have had access to butter, but so we're going to use that today. And two ounces of sugar. Now, generally, I would use caster sugar. However, they didn't have caster sugar in them days, so this is just normal granulated sugar. First of all, we're going to chop up the butter. There we go with a knife. Be careful with this. Oh, excuse me, I'm knocking the thing over. Just cut it up into little pieces because what we're going to do is cream it with the sugar. While we're on creaming methods, there's a recipe for an old Victorian cake recipe that I have on my channel, which you can find in the top right hand corner as you look at the screen. I'll link it there. And then add our whoops, two ounces of sugar. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's obviously enough. And we're going to start creaming this. And by creaming, I mean pushing down on the butter into the sugar until it's incorporated. This is what it looks like when you get to the stage where you need to add your flour. So now I'm going to add my oat flour. I'm going to add it gradually because it will be hard to do. Push it in a little bit at a time. This is our work. So just work it in gently. Just keep going until it's incorporated. And once you've got one incorporated, add some more. And carry on until all the flour is incorporated. So once you've got your oat mixture, looking like little pebbles with lots of dry bits in it and um, there shouldn't be any pale looking oat flour left what we're going to do is put it into this lined tin now i've lined it with tin foil just because i couldn't find the baking for the baking sheet so and we're gonna bake it in an oven for an hour on gas mark three, which is 325, 325, I can't see it, 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, pop that there. And just press it down with your hand into the, into the tin. So down, so that's nicely lined. What we're going to do now is stick it in the oven, as I said, 325, gas mark three, for an hour. Mm -hmm. 
So now we're going to be making Anzac biscuits. They get the name from the Australian New Zealand Army Corps, which established itself in World War One. Um, and these were made basically to um, remind the soldiers of home, shall we say. So what I've got in my pan is four ounces of butter or spread, whichever you've got, or a mixture of the both. I've just got some leftovers in here. We've got a teaspoon of bicarb, a tablespoon of golden syrup, and a tablespoon of water. And we're gonna heat that up until it becomes frothy. So this again, this one's from the turn of the century. It has a few more ingredients in it than the last few recipes that I've done, but it's still quite frugal, should we say. That's the beauty about these old recipes. They are fairly frugal. We're going to be putting it into a cup full of oats. I've got jumbo oats here. A cup full of desiccated coconut. A cup full of flour. A cup full of non-packed ground sugar so that's what we're going to be putting it into so this is our our frothy mixture and we're going to put this in here and mix it all together mm, pretty make sure we get it all out of the pan because we do need that for moisture okay and then just mix everything together Now I know from experience this is a dry mixture and what we're going to be doing is making it into balls and cooking it in the oven. So I'm going to be taking um, like golf ball size amounts, squishing it together and then popping it onto my tray and seemingly it's supposed to be able to press down with a fork. So as you can see here, I've made 12 so far. I've still got a few more to do. I'll put these in the oven on a moderate oven, which is gas mark four five, for about 10 minutes and see how they are. I was supposed to do them until the golden brown. 